What is up beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here from CLG Lifestyle. Influencing you to love self. Hope you guys are feeling blessed and grateful to be alive because guess what? Some people did not wake up today and some people are not going to go to bed tonight. And so that's an opportunity for us uh, to be grateful and to give glory to God where glory and to whom glory is due I, I must add. If you've not already uh, subscribed to the channel, do so right now. That way you can stay connected to what it is that I'm doing. And if what I'm doing provides light into your life, if it's encouraging, if it's exhorting, if it's motivational, then definitely support by liking, sharing, subscribing, and also supporting via the, the information in the description box. Also, I have a free ebook called I King Amongst Kings Affirmation, uh, excuse me, I King Amongst Kings, a King David Desser, uh, descendant, affirmations for the king who is becoming with spiritual insights. This ebook is a quick read. It's 16 pages and it's intended to help you become the person, the man that God created for you to become and to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I also share spiritual insight as to what has helped me and what I believe um, has changed my life and hopefully it inspires you and encourages you in another way outside of the word of God, which should be your number one frame of reference when it comes to the things of God, your purpose, his hopes, plans and future for your life. The word of God should be number one. But definitely uh, download my free ebook as an alternative, you know what I'm saying, source of spiritual insight and spiritual revelation for you to uh, grow spiritually. Also, the 21 affirmations that I have in there is going to help you become because I believe in the power of the tongue and the power of your words. I believe that scripture is life and spirit. And as a result, because scripture is life and spirit, um, you will be able to... I believe accelerate even faster and manifest even faster because it's you and God co-laboring or working together to achieve um, his goal, right? Hopefully for your life. So today um, I, w I was hearing this song, you know, so every season, you know, all seasons, there's a season, right? All seasons come to an end and there's a new season and then that season comes to an end. And so I'm in a season right now where it's coming to an end and Sometimes when you know that a season is coming to an end, whether it's a job that you worked at, whether it's people that you've been around, you know, whatever it is, you know, when it comes to relationships, you know, oftentimes when that season has come to an end, there can be sadness, there can be just mourning, there can be maybe anger or even frustration, resentment, you know, there's different types of emotions that can result as that can result as a result of, you know, whatever happened during that relationship. And so for me, oftentimes, because of the grace of God, it doesn't matter how a relationship goes or how it ends. And I'm talking about employee relation. I'm talking about platonic relations. I'm talking about familiar, you know, relations as far as blood. I'm talking about any type of human relationship, not just relationships that are dealing with intimacy, but all types of relationships when it comes to two people or multiple people's multiple people. Um, I find that, you know, by the grace of God, you know, when when seasons has come to an, to an end concerning uh, these types of relationships that I always get sad. I always I always get sad because and I, and I, and I tend to shed a tear because. Not saying that, you know, you when you do decide to end a situation that you're, you know, that it's always you that the person is losing. But oftentimes you just wish you can take people along with you or you wish people can just work towards making a situation or making an experience better for mutually for both people. But oftentimes, you know, people, unfortunately, you know, the human nature, I guess, does not want to be harmonious. You know, in fact, the human nature or the flesh is hostile towards the things of God. And you'll find that only when we put Christ in the center do things work because we're allowing the Lord to lead us. We're allowing the Lord to mold together our differences and our different experiences and all the things that trauma would say never, it, it will never work. You know, the grace of God and the spirit of God is able to do the impossible by bringing, uh, bringing us together, no matter what our backgrounds are, no matter what our experiences are, the age, whatever. Holy Spirit, the Lord has a way of bringing people together who 
according to the world and societal expectations will not, would not mesh or blend. So, um, <clears throat> so oftentimes with that in mind, I often tend to say, you know, I often, I'm often shed a tear, you know, of how, you know, when ending a relationship, because it's like, man, it could have just been so much better had, you know, this been that way or this been that way or whatever. But I've learned again with this lesson that, um, <laughs> That ultimately, you know, you just got to keep pushing. You get, you just got to keep pressing forward. You just got to be, you got to, first of all, your heart should be toward all for God. You, you should have your heart in the hands of the Lord because he will never dishonor it. He will never betray it. Okay, so keep that in mind, right? No matter how much we do for people, we should always have our hearts in the hands of God. Because um, he... It's just he knows what to do with it. He knows how to take care of us, okay? So while I was thinking about just the end of the season, this song kept coming to my head, and it's called I Was Here. I Was Here, and it's sung by Beyonce. But the song, the, the Lord wanted me to make mention of who actually wrote the song. And the songwriters, as uh, expressed here, is Shane McAnally, Brandy Clark, and Matt Jenkins. So Beyonce sung the song, but... It's the songwriters are Shane Mc, Mac and Nally, Brandon, Brandy, Brandy Clark and Matt Jenkins. And so I've heard this song, right? I've heard the song and I've listened to the song and I've watched the video of this song. And when I remember when the Holy Spirit had me recall this song, I remember the video when I saw the video, how powerful, you know, and how deep the song was. And I remember throughout the videos, throughout the video, that they would capture people in the audience. I, I believe she was singing for some humanitarian organization. And the video, the camera would capture people in the audience, you know, really captivated by Beyonce's performance, right? And even the lyrics, there was this one girl who was just really singing the lyrics from her heart. And I, you know, I've always loved music, but I never had, I never really listened to music the way that, that I do now. You know, I'm more intentional about the music that I listen to. I actually pay attention to the lyrics more than ever now. But that wasn't always the case. I was always more about the beat and how the music make me feel as far as the melody, the beat, and the rhythm. But never really the lyrics, okay? But that has changed, glory to God. And so, I wanted to read some of the lyrics here, right? Because it was what God affirmed to me when, you know, when I was starting to feel sad. And, and I'm like, wow, Lord, did... The, the works that I do here, the, the, the impact that I make, that I made here, the sacrifices that I made here, was it fruitful? You know, were people able to, you know, see the Christ in me? You know, and I think, I think ultimately that is ultimately what our goal and our resting place should be is, did you serve the Lord? Is, were you the Christ that people would have met right because you were there because i was here right and so let me just read some of the lyrics i want to leave my footprints on the sands of time know there was something that something that i left behind when i leave this world i leave no regrets leave something to remember so they won't forget i was here i lived i loved i was here i did i've done everything that i wanted and it was more than i thought it would be i will leave my mark so everyone will know i was here I want to live, I want to say I lived each day until I died. I know that I had something in somebody's life. The heart I've touched will be the proof that I leave, that I made a difference and the world will see. I was here, I lived, I loved, I was here. I did, I've done everything that I wanted and it was more than I thought it would be. I will leave my mark so everyone will know I was here. So Holy Spirit was saying to me, you left your footprints on the sand of time. Something that you left behind. When you leave this world, I'll have no regrets. And you can apply this to yourself. Leave something to remember so they won't forget. They will never forget the good that you've done. They'll never forget the cheek that you've turned every time they insulted you, every time they did something that warranted you cursing them out or being vindictive or resentful. You didn't, you showed love, you showed mercy, you showed kindness. You continue to work as if you're working onto the Lord. You continue to love. You continue to just, like I said, turn the other cheek. You continue to just be you who you are. 
you didn't allow strife and contention and jealousy and envy to infiltrate your heart, right? You stayed the path. You stayed the course. I want to say I lived each day until I died. I know that I had something in somebody's life. The hearts I have touched will be the proof that I leave, that I, that I made a difference and this world will see. Let me tell you something. Some people will never forget you. You've touched the hearts of people who will never forget you. And I don't care what title they have. I don't care what their status is in life. You've come across some people who are high and some people who are low. And God has given you the ability. The word of God says, you know, the, um, God says he will let uh, princes will bow before you. This is in Isaiah 49, I believe. Princes will bow before you because you are the one whom he has chosen. You are his chosen vessel. And so when God has anointed you, when God has appointed you, appointed you, when you are a disciple of the Lord, when you've been chosen by God, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So anyone that God or the Lord sends on his behalf, all knees have to bow, all knees have to bow and show reverence. It's not to you, the person, it's to the Spirit of God, it's the Holy Spirit of God in you. And it's to honor God because God had, has chosen you, God has established you as his representation in the earth. So I was here, I lived, I loved, I was here, I did, I've done everything that I wanted. And it was more than I thought it would be. I will leave my mark so everyone will know I was here. When you, when you do things the way God wants you to do things, God is going to reward you. He's going to reward you with influence. He's going to reward you with status. He's going to reward you with actual people that are trustworthy, people who have your back, people who are who love the way you love, people who give the way you give, people who serve the way you serve. You know, but you, we all, it seems like we all on this journey to the top of the mountain, on this journey of becoming famous and distinguished, as Drake said, you know, um, when, when you are who you say you are and it's in your mind, because it's one thing to think about yourself a certain way, but when your life reflects what you believe you are as a royal priesthood, as a joint heir, as someone who's famous and distinguished, a blessing to the nations, the head and not the tail above and ever below, you got to understand that, um, that, to serve the Lord is it's no other reward and God will bless you. God will show up and show out in your life. And you'll find that you've had to go through these trainings. You've had to go through these experiences to really make, to really make a decision as to whom you're going to serve. Because a lot of the people, you know, in my walk, you know, in my training for reigning, so to speak, I found that a lot of the, the things that I thought was right or a lot of the expectations that i had when it comes to people who proclaim to be christians or to follow christ it wasn't what i expected and that could have allowed me to say you know what maybe i should maybe my standards or my expectations are too high or they're too impossible um because no one seems to be meeting what i believe to be righteous in the eyes of god but for whatever reason, I've just not been able to compromise my convictions or compromise my belief. Or if I believe an organization or a leader or someone or something is not um, is not aligned with what God wants, then I can't be a part of that. And so... Um, and so you'll find that you'll have to continuously leave organizations, leave people, leave situations if what they're doing, if what they're participating in is not aligning with the will of God. Now, you will know, outside of that, you will know if God wants you to stay in a situation. God will give you the strength. He will give you confirmation. And I say right now, even if you've made a decision to leave a place and you're leaving it prematurely, I pray in the name of Jesus that that decision does not go through, that some way, somehow God makes it right and that, um, and that you get what is yours. You, you know, you seize what is yours in the name of Jesus. And I received that for myself as well. But sometimes they say you, sometimes you got to leave things and let it go to see. And if it's really for you, it's going to come back to you. In other words, nothing that's for you um, can be taken away. The enemy may be able to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy may be able to steal from you, but 
once you've risen up into your the identity and to the person that God has called you to be, the enemy has to restore back what he stole. So sometimes it's just a season that you have to go away, some time that you have to go away. Um, you know, and and come back and 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 as the word of god said you know when was it david or who was it was asking joshua was consulting the lord like lord should shall we pursue and the lord said yes pursue and you shall recover all so sometimes you have to go sometimes you just have to let the enemy do what do what he does right not because he is stronger than you not because he's better than you not because he's a winner but because your appointed time of victory hasn't yet come. And it's your responsibility to, again, stay before the Lord, to follow the instructions of the Lord, and let the Lord direct you. Because you don't want to waste time with people, places, and things that no longer serve you. To be around people, places, and things that, you know, God never wanted you to be around in the first place. So, with that being said, beautiful people, I'm Corwin L. Gilliams. I am so grateful and thankful to have this opportunity to speak to you. And I pray that... Uh, that my platform is a blessing a blessing to you and you continue to watch and support if you again want to support this platform check out the description box and i will be able to um be able to uh you'll be able to access you know all of my my platforms and what it is that i do as well as support i am corwin l gilliams from clg lifestyle signing out